Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and today I want to talk about Genius Sports. This is a stock that we've been co covering since they announced their SPAC merger back in November of last year. Genius Sports was originally DMYD brought out by the DMYD Technology Group and they completed their merger earlier this year. Genius Sports has been on a tear and the last time we talked about them is actually when they announced that they had won the business of the NFL handling their data. What Genius Sports does is they are essentially the data provider for a number of analytics companies and in particular sports betting books. Chief among them from another company we've talked about on this channel would be DraftKings, but also they're in there with FanDuel, Shutterfly, and the like. So one of the reasons why I want to talk about Genius Sports today and the reason that they are up 10% today and frankly have just been on a tear this week is because of the fact that over the course of the past 10 days, it's been leading up to earnings. This morning, they announced those earnings today. And not only were they good, strong earnings, but they actually raised guidance for the rest of the year. So one of the things that I want to highlight, the reason why this is so important is because currently they have a total, a, a, they have relatively low volume compared to what we normally trade on the channel. They had pretty high volume today. But one of the things we want to talk about here is that they raised overall guidance to $250 million to $260 million for the year, which is nearly a 25% increase over the $190 million that they were originally forecasting. You'll actually showcase that in the SPAC presentation. So it's pretty crazy that that was actually occurring the way that it was. The other thing that I would highlight is that this is their first quarter revenue and it rose to 53.7 million, which is more than 72% higher than it was a year ago today. So you can see that right here. So why is that important? Well, let's take a look at their SPAC presentation and what they were pitching for those clients. So this is from their SPAC presentation when they were planning their merger with the goal and what we just talked about, their original forecasted growth was $190 million in revenue in 2021. Now they're expecting 250 to 260 million, which is higher than what they were actually forecasting for revenue from 2022. The reason why I'm so excited about this is not only does the company do very, very well, but they're also able to hold on to a very high EBITDA in that exact same model. So not only are they growing their revenue, but their profitability is growing as well. So the fact that they were able to land that that contract with the NFL appears to have materially moved their bottom line. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform going forward. Let's talk about some of these financial results. So here's the first quarter earnings presentation. Keep in mind, I'm by no means a financial advisor. I'm just some guy on YouTube. And if you find this type of content, please like and subscribe. We've been talking about DMYD since they were $12 a share. So let's talk about some of their growth. 52% year over year growth, all the way up to 53.7 million. Keep in mind that is still one fifth of the total expectation for the entire calendar year now that they've raised the fiscal year guidance to 250 to 260 million dollars. So two of the reasons why that expectation is there is they had not one but two acquisitions. But I think that one of the key items that's really gonna boost that up is going to be that strategic partnership with the National Football League. The other item I wanna highlight as I kinda of go up the screen here is their profitability, they're raising this the adjusted EBITDA 414%, but really what this shows is that not only did they grow, but they grew very profitably, which is always encouraging to see. Just to showcase some of the long-term partnerships that they have available, you can see that on the screen, feel free to pause, but they are growing rapidly in the United States. One of the things that they've done very well is they've continued to lock in those licenses for the United States states as they become online and as they become available. They also have key relationships with a number, like I mentioned earlier, of the key betting sports betting books, such as DraftKings, PointsBet, and a lot of the hotel chains as well. So let's talk about their capability in the financial space. You can see that this growth has grown incredibly rapidly from what we saw last year, with the bulk of that coming from just technology and additional acquisition. 
And these are monstrous gains. Again, they increased their year revenue to higher than what we were expecting next year. And that's assuming that they don't have any additional raises for 2022, which I anticipate to be expected. So now they're increasing that overall because they expect more and more growth. Some of that's going to come from acquisitions. The fact that they're capable of doing so profitably is pretty insane. This increases my overall expectation from a valuation perspective long term even higher. Again, we may want to see if there's any potential drop here, but if you're a long term shareholder, I really like the price here for where it could be for 2025. I always talk about building that 2025 portfolio, but I'd be very hesitant to touch this right now if you're a short term trader because now we may see a consolidation period or it could rip higher or lower. We don't know until it kind of develops that range. So this overall is my expectation going forward as we're now higher than 2022. This means that the overall potential of this company to keep going higher is that much better. My original price target for this company was $24 a share. That was at the $190 or $190 million in total revenue. I need to do some additional due diligence on this company, but what I would like to see is this company end up in the upper 20s to low 30s by the end of this year. So that may not sound super exciting to go from a price target of like 24 to 27, but there's still a lot of upside there. You're still looking at anywhere between 20 to 25% upside from current levels. So that's what I'm gonna be watching going forward. There's still a lot to go on in this industry, but the key thing I've noticed is that Genius Sports has continued to hold itself pretty well, where DraftKings and Penn National Gaming have dropped pretty significantly. The reason for that is because at the end of the day, this company is profitable and profitability and having the capability to support yourself without issuing additional debt or diluting your shares is very, very encouraging. So I'm going to be watching that going forward to see if they do something like a share offering as well. So all this being said, if you find this type of content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop them down below or join the Discord in the description and check there. Thanks. Talk to you later.